Kimberly here, everybody, and thank you for joining me in this preview of Colossi. In this game, two to four players are vying for this island. All the different environments, they're going to battle each other. They have a an identical deck of different kinds of tricks up their sleeve to defeat the other Colossi on the island. Now, the game takes 10 to 15 minutes per player, and you are going to fight for three environments. The first player to win the third environment wins the game, and that's a standard game. If you want to play a quick game, you can just say first player to collect two of those environment cards. Now, as I said, players are going to have a deck of 24 cards, and their deck is going to be uniquely colored. I've got this set up for a two-player game. I've got a stack of the environments here, and I've got three environments laid out. You want to make sure that the environments are between you and your opponent, because you are going to be playing cards down into environments face down during this hand-building phase. Now, once a particular environment has eight or more cards, any player, when it's their turn, can trigger a skirmish phase, and that means the skirmish will take place in either Poison Swamp, the Sticks, or Cavern, and there are going to be specific rules to the environment as well as a potential item or items available for players to essentially nab up before other players and activate. So. Here's what we do. We are going to hand building phase, draw three cards. Then on your turn, do one of the following. Prepare a card face down in any environment, then draw back up to three, or initiate the skirmish. And that means you have eight or more cards on it. So that's all we're gonna do right now. Our cards are broken down into a variety of types, and they are going to tell you exactly what color or symbol for colorblind friendliness. And it tells you how many cards there are. So there are four acolytes, three water cards, two fire cards, five divine gifts, three beasts, five colossus, and two electric cards. And that's going to be in everybody's deck. And it tells you exactly what the power is. So it just kind of orients you to the kinds of cards that are in your hand. I'm going to take a look at my three cards. It looks like I've got two colossus cards and one divine gift. Now my colossus cards are not the same. And they don't have the same strength, because what you want to do is look up here at the strength, but you also want to look down here at the ability. Now I'm going to take one of these cards, I'm going to place it face down in one of these three areas, then draw back up to three. That's my turn. Then my opponent is going to do the same. So the Divine Gift is great. Now let me see if there are any restrictions first, because some of these places might have restrictions on playing cards to areas. So the Poison Swamp says, after you prepare a card here in the hand building phase, discard the other two cards from your hand, then draw back up to three cards. So that's that's pretty poisonous. That That's wild. If you don't like the cards that are in your hand and you want new cards, that's actually a great opportunity for you to play a card face down, and then you have to discard and draw all three brand new cards. So good if you don't want your hand, bad if you like your hand. And again, your hand is three cards. In the sticks, it says every time you play a fire card here during a skirmish, discard one card in play here that is not a fire card. So I have to be really careful about placing my non-fire cards here, knowing that my opponent, if when we're in a skirmish, um, it says here when you play a card down, then my cards might be discarded. They might not actually be very helpful. So the sticks is very dangerous for fire. It's going to start those fires. It's really going to burn through everything. And then the cavern says during skirmishes here, if you have five or more cards in play when your turn starts, you must pass. Well, these are going to happen during skirmishes. So I'm going to try to initiate a skirmish pretty fast just to show you what it looks like. So I'm not going to go here. I'm going to go in a different place. And I think what I might do is look for cards. This Foresight card says, look at the top four cards from your deck, add one of them to your hand, and return the other three to the top of your deck in any order. Well, maybe I could start looking for fire cards if I need those fire cards, um, and I get to play that card during a skirmish. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing are these items. The items don't matter until we're in a skirmish, so I'll talk about them when we get to that point. All right, so I'm going to draw a new card. This is my new hand, but now I have to wait for my opponent to go. I don't want to look at their cards because then I'll know what they have. Um, so what I'm going to do for now is just simply place some cards out. So I'm going to say that card goes there, and we're going to uh, give my opponent a hand again. And I'm going to try to play uh, smart. I'm going to try to be cool about it. 
Find your opponent who has the most cards and play here. This uh, power is equal to the number of cards. Oh, so that's variable based on how many they've got in play. Pretty cool. This one says if your card is in play when scoring a skirmish, you may move it face down to an environment instead of scoring it. That could be really good for... I sure don't want to get rid of my poison swamp. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna essentially return the volley. My opponent went here. I want to go in the cavern too. I'm going to draw my card. I got an electric card. That's, that's good. I think electric card uh, forces players to uh, pay for divine gifts, which I know this one is. So I have to keep track. This was my divine gift. This was my beast card. Um, companion divine gift is pretty good too. Um, okay, so he's going to go. Let's have him go here. We'll draw a new card. This is going to continue playing. And if you have more players, you just go in clockwise order. Players placing a card in front of where they are. So if you had three environments, you might have to spread them out with three or four players so that I can be on this side, my opponent can be on this side, another opponent here, and another opponent here. So just make sure that you give enough space for that. Okay, so we will continue playing cards. I am going to essentially fast forward at this time, and then I will start that really cool skirmish phase. Okay, so now that my opponent played this card into the cavern environment, their totals eight cards. And that is now the trigger for initiating a skirmish. So when it comes back to me, I can choose to start a skirmish. I will. I will start the skirmish. What I'm going to do is I'm taking my hand of three cards that I already have. I'm picking up the cards that I played into that environment and adding them to my hand. And now I've got eight cards. No, seven cards. <laughs> I had three plus four. Now the hand limit here is 10. As it says uh, here, you can only have 10 cards during your skirmishes. And then what's going to happen on your turn, you're gonna do one of the following. Play a card face up, take an item card, which we have the hatchet, or pass and move all the cards remaining in your hand to other environments. And at the end of every skirmish, the players involved will be left with nothing in their hand. So when they go back to hand building, they draw back up to their three card for their hand building phase. So this is a brand new phase. I'm gonna take my opponent's hand of three, take their cards, and then they are going to have these cards available to them. Now, let me show you what Hatchet does. Hatchet says, discard one item on any environment or one perk item that's already in play for another player. So I could activate the hatchet and I could discard the poison pill in the sticks or I could discard Ebenezer from the poison swamp. Now a perk card that is in front of another player could, it, it looks like this, it has an arrow up um, and it is really powerful. And honestly, this Ebenezer card, if my opponent had it, I would 100% discard it because it says here, discard your entire hand. This card gives you 10 power. Let's say my opponent did that. They got Ebenezer, they have 10 points with this card. This says discard it, and now they lose those 10 points. So you can see how these item cards really, really help or hinder. So I can choose to do it, or I can choose to play a card face down. Now I don't wanna play my Spark, which is an electric card, before I play my Divine Gift, because any player who plays a Divine Gift after this is out, has to discard a card from their hand. So I want to get my divine gift out first before I start making people pay taxes, <laughs> including me. Now my card says, draw two cards from my deck. Now here are two cards that add to my strength, that add to my possible um, fight, and it gives me even more super cool cards. So drawing cards, having divine gifts, really, really powerful. So I played a card, now it is my opponent's turn. I'm gonna put my cards right there. They're gonna take a look at their cards. Now, they don't know what I have, but they also have, it looks like, an electric card. They have a lot of these water cards. They've got a couple divine, a beast card, a colossus. They have really good cards here. Um, so let's take a look at, maybe they wanna say, well, you drew two cards, I wanna draw two cards. They're gonna play the exact same card, and they're gonna say one card, and they're gonna go two cards. And so now they've got even more cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're good, we're good. All right, so that's their turn. 
We are now going to continue playing and you activate your ability at the bottom if it says when you do it or if it says anytime this is triggered and the other one is if you have a card in play during scoring. So there are three different times of activations. Now this is a really powerful card. I'm gonna play my Acolyte. My Acolyte is worth two points of strength, so now I've got two points to zero for my opponent. And it says if I have more Acolytes in play than each of my opponents, the card gets plus three. So now that card is worth five. I don't know if my opponent has Acolytes, but I do know that when I drew my cards, I got another Acolyte. There were only four in my deck. And so I could maybe get a bunch of strength out there and have more than my opponent. So I'm going to take that, place it down here. We're going to take a look and my opponent is going to play. Um, well, that's not bad. This solidarity, divine gifts says choose one of the other environments, pick up all the cards you've prepared there and add them to your hand. It could be really powerful to have a bunch of cards, even though you're siphoning off of an environment that you've invested in, it could really give you the boost you need um, to do that. And I didn't play that uh, electric card but they know they don't want to play the electric card because it affects everybody. So let's say they play that Solidarity. Um, solidarity, take these two cards, add them. Uh-oh. Oh no, he's got these Acolytes. Gosh darn it. See, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I, see, I don't know that because I'm this person. But they looked at it and they went, oh, you thought you were going to have Acolytes. Well, now I'm going to have my Acolytes. So this is going to continue again playing a card face up, activating it, or taking an item, or if you feel like you are outnumbered, if you feel like you are beaten, if you feel like you don't want to continue playing cards into the cavern, um, then you just can take the rest of your cards and then put them out in the other environments. And it's passing. That's the pass phase. And you will just simply wait for every player to either play the cards from their hand or pass. And then you will determine the winner based on the amount of points that are showing in the top corner or if you have the special ability that gives you more points. Now, we have to remember in the cavern, during skirmishes, if you have five or more cards in play when your turn starts, you have to pass. So I'm not going to be able to play all of these cards and I need to keep that in mind. I'm only going to be able to play down five and then by the time it comes to that turn again, I'm going to have none. I, I, I will have to essentially, you know, pass. So Cavern has this really special restriction. This has the fire restrictions. Um, and then this one has the hand building restriction, which is really, really interesting. And you'll see here, look at all of these environment cards. There are so, so many. And the same thing goes with the item cards. Look at this so many item cards. And item cards uh, generally have some kind of payment. You'll see uh, this one, you discard the number of cards from your hand and then your opponents have to do the same. So it's a question mark discard. Um, this one, you have to discard your whole hand. This one says discard an item, but it's for free because it says zero. So some of these items you're gonna see say one. You have to pay a card from your hand just to get that special ability. Some of them might say two. So you have to have cards that you're willing to sacrifice to get the cool items. And that is the game. There are some fantastic combinations of cards. These are the cards that everybody has. So once I see my opponent play Divine Gift Solidarity, they're not going to play that in any of the other environments. Uh, it's just really cool if you can remember what your opponents are doing, if you can really play it just right, you could get those environments, set yourself up for success, and really navigate these environments super, super easy. So I think this game reminds me a whole bunch of Ethnos. I love Ethnos. Now that is a board game. This is a card game. And I think the board game is just the bigger, longer version but I think it really reminds me of Ethnos uh, because of the cards. You have the cards in your hand are of these different factions. And the factions have these special abilities that change the way they function based on who they're with or where they go. And I feel like that's what Ethnos does too. It kind of gives you this like really cool advantage. Now in that game, you're putting down discs for power on a map. And here you are building up your 
battle, you're building up all of these different strengths with your hand and then having a skirmish. And that skirmish is going to be resolved. And one person will win the card. They take that card and they put it in front of them. And that is one of their three towards the win for the game. So I really like that. I think the combinations are super cool. I think the cards are really easy to understand. The items, very cool, can really swing some, like be there in like a pinch, just give you exactly what you need um, to definitely, um, uh, you know, bowl down your opponent. I think the environments are vastly different and super, super unique. And it comes in this teeny tiny box. I mean, this game is going to be compact, but boy, does it pack a punch. So I uh, really did have a fantastic time playing uh, Colossi, and I think you will too. Thank you for joining me in just this look and a quick playthrough uh, of, of Colossi, especially that one round trying to figure out who's going to win and how is it going to go. So um, look in the description. Uh, don't forget about that. Check the links. Uh, see if this game is for you because it is uh, up for Kickstarter campaign right now. All right, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye.